mind. I didn't want to be the bearer of bad news to my only friend. But later, Tomi found me in the hall. Amisa, how about we continue your science lab tour? Come on, the professor made me TA for the rest of the year, so I got access to some really awesome stuff. In the lab, I decided to tell Tomi what I'd seen. Hey, I, was I wanted to... to... <laughs> <laughs> you go first. There's something I wanted to tell you all day. When I was little, I got super sick. I was in the hospital for months. Seeing the doctors and nurses every day convinced me that if I ever wanted to get better, I wanted to help cure people. Your story about finding a cure for your sister reminded me why I got into science in the first place. If I can help you in any way, I will. So what were you gonna say? Just, uh, I'm really glad we met. Turns out, Tomi and I made a great research team. We spent every day in the lab after school experimenting. I could tell Kaori was mad, but I was done worrying about her. Tomi and I were just friends anyway. I settled into a nice routine. Research with Tomi, dinners with Aunt Hina, and FaceTimes with Moriko before bed. Occasionally, Kaori interrupted our research. She'd accidentally drop by. And I mean, drop by. Oh, sorry, Amisa. That stuff didn't look important. Hey, babe, I missed you but I just carried on working. I was doing this all for Moriko after all. While things were fine at school, matters at home weren't. Aunt Hina seemed to be worried all the time because of her greedy kids. Your cousins forced me to sell all of my art so that they could split the money between them. They were angry because I refused to sell the house, but it's been in our family for generations. How can I just sell it? I totally understand, Auntie. Money isn't everything. After that, I tried to always make Aunt Hina feel happy. I cooked her favorite mushroom dumplings, went shopping, and watched amazing movies with her to cheer her up. All the while, Tomi and I had been working hard to find a cure for Moriko's allergy. After months and months of researching, we knew we needed to call in the experts. So we put together a proposal to get some of the best scientists on board. But the school rejected our idea because it required a huge chunk of the research funds. I was heartbroken. I was sad for weeks. And to brighten up my mood, one time, Tomi got ice cream for me. Thanks, but I'm not hungry. Does this smell funny to you? Hey! <laughs> you have an ice cream mustache. Really? So do you! Tomi and I <laughs> laughed like crazy, but then Cowrie walked in and killed the good vibes. Babe, I have this really bad stomach boo-boo, and I missed you so much. Take me to the mall. You know shopping helps me. Jeez, I wish they sold life at the mall so she could go there and buy one. On the subway back to Aunt Hina's house, I felt so annoyed. I needed to tell Tomi about what a cheat Kauri was, but what if he thinks I'm making this up? What if he thinks I'm interfering in his relationship? Weirdly, Kauri was waiting for me outside Aunt Hina's. Are you trying to steal my boyfriend? Why is he with you all of the freaking time? No, we're just friends, and I guess you're insecure because you like to kiss other boys. I saw you at the tea room, you know. I thought she was gonna hit me, but then she <laughs> laughed. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm so worried. It looks like you won't be living here for much longer anyways. As Kauri left, I saw what she meant. Aunt Hina had sold the house. There were movers boxes all packed up. First, my school didn't want to help us find a cure, and I couldn't help my baby sister. And now this! It felt like everything was falling apart. Aunt Hina, why? Because you were right. Money isn't everything. I sold my house so that I can make a donation to your school science department. They'll have more than enough to support your scientific research now. But what? Oh my god, thank you so much! It was the best news ever! I returned to school super motivated, and I put my soul into the research. Tomi and I started to test our findings, like real scientists. And weeks later, we were finally finished. A panel of scientists checked our work, and the medicine was ready! Wow, you two are amazing. You're both prodigies. This will help so many people. When I told Aunt Hina the great news, she congratulated me, but I could tell she was a bit sad. So, I guess you'll be going home. Yeah, but I'll be back. I promise. I'll make it up to you, Aunt Hina. At the train station, as I was struggling with my bags, I heard Tomi's voice. Need a hand? Okay. Honestly, I couldn't let you go without a last goodbye. Tomi, I'm sorry. I was just so excited to get the medicine to Mariko, I forgot everything else. If anyone could find a cure, I always knew it would be you. It was us. Thank you. For everything. I have to give you this before you leave. Tony, it's beautiful. But Kauri... Don't worry about Kauri and her jealousy. We broke up. We weren't right for each other. But today is about you. Good luck, Amisa. Moriko is waiting for you. Once I reached home, I gave Moriko the good news, and her doctor soon started her treatment with the new medicine. 
After a few weeks, the doctor had run tests and was positive Mariko could go in the sun. We drove her to the beach that night. We waited for the sun to appear on the horizon with an umbrella, just in case. I was so nervous that it would give her a rash. But then, there it was, the sun. I took Mariko's hand in mine and carefully walked on the shore. She giggled. For the first time in her life, she walked freely under the sun. Oh my gosh, it worked. Does this mean I can be like other people and go on holiday? <laughs> yes, it does. Sometime later, Moriko and I took a trip. We arrived at Aunt Hina's apartment out of the blue, and she gave us a warm welcome. It was the last day of Moriko's holiday, and I wanted to make sure everything was perfect. Don't forget your sunscreen, Moriko. Amisa, thank you for everything, but I'm not a baby anymore. You don't always have to protect me. <laughs> That's not something I can just turn off, Mariko. I'm always gonna look out for you, but you're right. Maybe it's time we both go on our own adventures. That's good, cause I think there's someone here who wants to see you. The doorbell rang, and there he was, Tomi. Mariko didn't hesitate. She ran to him right away. You did so much for me, Tomi. That's from me, and also from my sister. Mariko then looked back at me, giggling. Seeing that smile on her face, everything became clear. I had to tell Tomi my true feelings, and I did.